All right, you guys, I have a really important video that I want to talk about today, and I'm so sorry about all the noise here. I'm in LA for filming and such, and there's a lot of traffic going on, so please excuse that. Um, but I was really debating over this past week of whether to do this video or not, and I kind of posted a few things on Twitter saying, you know, I'd like to share my truth. I don't want by any means this to be um, part of any of the drama. I'm not gonna drop any names. I'm not gonna talk about very specific instances, even though I have a lot of things that have happened in the last few years within this industry with certain people, and I've kept my mouth quiet on it because I didn't want to, for one, I don't wanna badmouth people even if they have done me wrong, and also I just don't wanna be a dramatic person. I, I try not to, sometimes it's hard, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But I feel like now is a good time to finally speak up of what I really think is going on in the beauty industry. And I want this to come from a very neutral spot um, because I feel like I have a unique advantage. I'm not only um, a brand owner now, but I've been an influencer for the last 10 years. So I feel like I can take kind of a neutral side and say I think both parties are part of the problem that has happened in the beauty community right now. And I think it's really sad. And um, unfortunately, I feel like I've seen this coming for the last year and I didn't wasn't able to say anything because um, I didn't want it to be taken wrong and thinking that, oh, well, if, you know, Makeup Geek isn't talked about as much anymore, Marlena's just being a hater, she's being jealous, and it's not any of that, but I, I, I'm so sorry if, you know, I haven't spoken up enough in the last year, I was just honestly afraid of people taking in the wrong way and thinking that my motives were bad when it's not, I generally just want to speak my truth. Um, so you guys have seen all the things that have happened in the beauty community. There's been a lot of um, things said, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of social climbing. And unfortunately, that is the case in the beauty industry. It's a very competitive time. There's thousands of beauty influencers that just want to, some of them just want to make a name for themselves. They want to share their love of makeup. They want to have something they're passionate about and support their livelihood by doing something that they love. Some, unfortunately, are doing it because they just want to be famous. They want to have a nice paycheck. They want to go on trips. They want to, you know, have the fame and not really share the love of the beauty in the industry. And that's the part that's really sad for me. Um, and I think part of the problem has been um, the social climbing influencers. And again, I'm not going to say any names because it doesn't help anything at all. And I think part of it is a brand, um, the company's faults too, in supporting that. And one thing that's happened with Makeup Geek in the last year, I'm not gonna lie and be total transparent, which is really hard for me right now, being very vulnerable, is saying last year was a really, really tough year for Makeup Geek, and you guys know that. You've seen that our name hasn't been talked about a lot. The reason why has been um, we haven't been supported by influencers because we haven't paid the massive amounts of money. When you're a smaller company, you don't have the big funds to do that, especially if we're trying to make um, makeup that's made in the US. It costs more than making it overseas. And us trying to keep our price point low enough to have enough margins to where we can actually be profitable. So with that being said, we don't have $60,000 to pay someone to do one video. And that's the rates that we've been given. And although as an influencer, I want to support other influencers so much because I know what it's like to have started and spend so much time filming a video, editing it, putting yourself out there and the emotional toll it takes to be an influencer, to have yourself critiqued and judged all the time. It's hard, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's difficult to be an influencer and to put yourself out there publicly. However, there's a difference between making a good living for yourself and charging so much that there comes a sense of entitlement. And I think that's where the problem is right now. I feel like because, um, you know, there is so much ways to make money now by, you know, promoting different companies and then paying certain fees. I think there comes a sense of entitlement. It's like, oh, well, I'm bringing you business. I deserve to be making millions of dollars a year. And yes, I think you should have a good living. But where does it become um, basically a racketeering business where it's all about the money and not about the passion of makeup? And that's just kind of where I stand. I could not afford to pay 60000 per video or 20000 for one post on Instagram. I was really struggling personally um, as a brand owner because it's like I'm an influencer and I know what it's like. And that's why I started Makeup Geek because I wasn't being paid by any of the big companies 10 years ago to do makeup and I was busting my butt filming videos. And so that's why I started my own company. So I get it. I'm Again, I'm trying to stay very neutral and say, yes, I want to pay influencers and I want everyone to be happy and make money, but let's not make it to a point where you're just Basically, it's all about like how much money you can make and who you can kick and step on on your way up. It's not right. It needs to stop. And I think companies are understanding that too. Um, I was in New York um, 
several months ago um, for a Target trip because we launched in Target and I had other CEOs of very successful companies, like I'm talking multi-billion dollar companies, come to me and say, Marlena, what do you do with the influencers? Like we feel like we're losing traction and we want to support them, but this is the amount we're getting charged for it and we don't see the return on that. What are you doing? And I was like, I, I don't know. I'm in the same boat. Um, I want to show support. I'd love to pay influencers, but what, what they're asking um, what they're charging for and the return that the company is getting for that we actually lose money So we're kind of in a bad spot too and I've had that coming from CEOs of billion dollar companies asking me that so I wish I knew the exact solution other than I feel like companies need to support the smaller influencers And that's what I'm really trying to focus on this year. So if you guys are a smaller influencer um, Click on the comments below and let me know what your profile is I'll make sure me and my team check it to uh, scope you guys out. We've always tried to support um, up-and-coming talent um, so I think companies are responsible for what's going on in the industry. I think they need to focus on um, what we call the micro-influencers, people that have smaller followings but are very genuine. And I think the influencers have a responsibility to do this because you're passionate about it and not step on people on the way up. If you're bad-mouthing people or if you're being friends with them just because you want to gain their followers, I think that's wrong. And I think um, all of those watching kind of has a responsibility too to see that and kind of spot it like, okay, I see this person's best friends with this one and now they're trying to get their audience, but then you know, two months later they're not friends. When you see kind of signs like that, you kind of know those are some warning signs. And again, I'm not trying to say any names, you guys, because this isn't just focused on a few people. There's, there's been literally um, like 20s and 30s uh, number of people that I personally come across that I've seen this happening. And so it's hard. It makes me really sad. So I think that's kind of the solution. And that's my point of view right now is saying that it takes both parties, not only the influencers to, if you're not passionate about makeup, you're doing it just for the money and just for the social climbing, don't do it. If you're doing it just for the fame, in the end, it's going to catch up with you and fans are going to recognize that and see that it's all about the money and not about makeup. And then I think brand owners and companies themselves need to realize that, um, there's multiple talent out there and that, yes, it's amazing to support people with larger followings. They've somehow done something right to get to that point. So obviously they're, they're doing something, but let's reach out and not just focus on a small group and let's focus on a multitude of super talented people out there that are just trying to share their love of makeup and be passionate about it. So that's my thoughts on that with the beauty industry. I've been in this for 10 years. I've tried to stay quiet and I hope that you guys take this as me not trying to, um, like get in the drama at all. That's why I'm not going to drop any names. Um, and I've had very specific instances that have literally destroyed um, things for the company because um, I've been told uh, if I don't pay this certain amount for a video that they're either going to talk bad about Makeup Geek or they're not going to use it at all. And for me, it's like, dang, I was like, when you started, I was helping you come up with your lights. You were give, asking me for advice and I gave it to you and then to turn around and say, oh, well, you're not going to pay me um, this X amount because i truly can't afford that, then I'm just not going to use your stuff. And I think that's just wrong, to be honest. And I'm, I'm sorry to put that out there. Um, so I guess I hope you guys understand my point of view. This is such a hard video to film because I don't want it to come off as me bad mouthing anyone. I just want to be very truth of the story of what's really happening in the beauty industry. It is a lot about money and people talk about products of who pays them the most. And it's sad. I, I wish it was just genuine reviews and um, hopefully it'll change in the near future. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see brands and influencers focus on the makeup again and not all of the other stuff that comes along with it. So <laughs> that's my story. That's all I'm saying for now. I'm not putting any names, no specific instances. I just want peace and love and going back to makeup. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to on my channel post some more makeup tutorials, educational stuff and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for that and I hope you guys are doing great. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.